Hi, I'm Taylor Smurl. And I'm Tommy Smurl. And this is... Neat! Neat! Well, uh, this week, over on the podcast, we talked all about the history of Puerto Rican rum and uh, Coquito. Coquito is the eggnog-type version of Puerto Rican cheer. It's delicious. It's very easy to make. But before we started on that recipe, I thought we would have another traditional uh, Puerto Rican cocktail. Uh, it's sort of a cocktail shot uh, called Chichaito. Just to get us get us warmed up and ready to make some drinks. All right, but let's not take too long. I'm looking forward to this coconutty delicious because I love coconutty stuff. I know you do. I know you do. But uh, Chitaito is it's a common shot you'll run into in Puerto Rico. It's an equal mix of Puerto Rican white rum and anisette liqueur. Fun fact. So dad doesn't know what spices are. We learned again this week. That's true. I have no idea. I mean, I, I know my salt and pepper and I've heard of cinnamon. Last week when I, I gave him the recipe for the uh, chicha morada, uh, it included cloves and it was like three, four cloves. Uh, and I said, three or four cloves of garlic in a drink? That's going to be terrible. And I said, no, <laughs> dad, the, the, the spice known as cloves, which he had never heard of. But then this was, this was like, well, it's like, well, okay, it's hard for me to believe that someone has lived an entire life and never, never wandered across cloves, but it could happen. But then this week when I was telling the ingredients for this shot, I said, and you're going to need some sort of anise flavor liquor. And what do you say, dad? Anus. <laughs> I said, an, an, an anus liqueur? That yeah. can't be good. Now what we're getting it? back to the garlic. Like the star anise. You know what I'm talking about? And he said, nope. So that's what we're working with. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna work, you're gonna be introduced to so many new spices making these cocktails with me. I got my Christmas vacation shot glass set. This one says, don't hog the nog. I have a Beetle House shot glass from the Beetle House here in New York. This is an important memory for me because I went here about two or three weeks before we knew about the virus and the shutdown happened. So this was one of my last nights out. Riley was in town, we went here together and uh, my friend Alex bought us these shot glasses. So shout out to Alex and humans that exist outside of my apartment. <laughs> All right, so to make this shot, it's just a 50-50 shot. I think you can eyeball it. Don Q, in the glass. Cheers. Oh. All right. Guys... Cheers. Wait a minute, there you are. Wow, I didn't even have to make a face after that. That's pretty good. Right, that's smooth. If you like licorice, it really just tastes like a lovely licorice little shot, you know? I love licorice. Funny story, when we used to get jelly beans as a kid, I would get the black ones from everybody else in the family, the licorice ones, because I like those the best and nobody else wanted to eat the black ones. Well, I must have gotten that from you because that is my favorite jelly bean is the licorice jelly bean. I love licorice. I like this, the weird salty licorice. Now, I should give a PSA here though. If you do like licorice, do not overeat licorice though. Why? Well, I read a story the other day about a fella that licorice was his favorite thing. And every day when he came home from work, he ate three bags of licorice and he died from it because there's some kind of compound in licorice that the body can't process and it built up enough that it killed him. Okay, so the science here is that the compound glycerizin, which is derived from licorice root, can cause potassium levels in the body to fall and lead to abnormal heart rhythms. But okay. I've been, you've been warned, you know, that pure licorice is bad for you. Now the alcohol, you can drink all you want. It's probably good for you. But the licorice, take it easy on the licorice and don't eat it and drive. Too much of a good thing is always bad. You know what drink <laughs> doesn't have anise in it? Oh, that doesn't sound anything like anise, so I like that. <laughs> Coquito. Coquito! Now here's the thing. I am going to bring to you a very simple, very basic coquito recipe, but definitely not the best one because I think the best one exists in Puerto Rico by somebody that has had coquito in their life for most of their life. That's not me. I do want to say for the base spirit, so for our shot, we, we use Don Q rum. I think that's what you're going to use for your coquito, right, Dad? That's exactly right. Okay, Don so Q. I noticed my liquor store happened to have uh, Ron del Barrelito, which is another Puerto Rican rum, but this is a Puerto Rican rum that happens to be aged 
uh, in oak casks for three years. So this is what I'm gonna use for my cookie dough. You can use white rum, you can use an aged rum, either one works, but I did want to bring Rondel Barolito to the table because it's one of the older, more popular in Puerto Rico varietals of rum that is, I love it. It has such a good barrel quality to it. I mean, the distillery has been around since like 1880, so it's got a lot of history. So if you're, if you want to bring a dark rum to the table, this is a good one to go with. I will stick with Don Quixote. All right. <laughs> so how, how, oh, so where are we going to put in? How much are we going to put in? So are you, we're, we're making half batches because we made half of our batch earlier. So we'd have some to try and it does need to sit for a little while. The actual recipe, which will be down below, calls for a cup and a half of rum. So that means six ounces per this half batch. Gotcha. Maybe one to grow on. All right, All right. what do we add next? So the basis of Coquito requires uh, creaminess, fattiness, and sweetness, and coconut flavor. So most recipes you'll see will have a, a sort of a blend of different creams and milks to acquire that. The one that we followed, yes, <laughs> that's showing it off, uh, has coconut milk, uh, creme de coco, or like Coco Lopez, and then a sweetened condensed milk. Uh, now I found a sweetened condensed coconut milk that I'm gonna be using. And then I have regular just coconut milk and Coco Lopez. Uh, so, so you can, if you are dairy free, this is very easy to translate into dairy free. So the full recipe for this, once again, will be down below, but it'll be, a, it'll be a full can of each of these. So I'm just using the remaining half can now. All right, now we gotta add some of your spices, don't we? Yes. So our, the two most essential spices to Coquito are nutmeg and cinnamon. Um, so I think the full recipe is an eighth of nutmeg and a fourth of cinnamon. I don't know about you, but me personally, I like more spice than not. So I'm just gonna do a little shake of each. Do you, do you stir it up or do you just let it sit there on the top for looks? You let, you whisk it up. You wanna get all in there. I don't want to do like I've seen on those British baking shows where they whisk it too much and then their batter turns to eggs. That's you not going to happen because there are no eggs here. Oh, okay, good. Are we at the drinking stage yet? Well, we are not at the drinking stage for another two hours or so. Luckily, we made a batch ahead of time that we can imbibe. Or we could pretend like through magic. Okay, let's go to the refrigerator and we'll join back right back here in two hours. Yeah. It's been two hours. We're back. <laughs> so here Look, we go. So it's we right out of the refrigerator. And I've got my, my moose head egg dog cup. I've got just like I, I said I did. I, well, well, we that's go. because you got me mine. Nobody got you one. Nobody got me one, but that's okay. I'm going to grate some nutmeg over mine because I love freshly grated nutmeg. You could do a cinnamon stick, that works fine too. I put a cinnamon stick in mine. I like cinnamon. I like cinnamon toast and cinnamon, what is that? Cinnamon toast crunch, brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts. I'm pretty much into cinnamon. So I put a cinnamon awesome. stick in mine. You're pretty into cinnamon these days. Yeah, pretty into cinnamon. All right, here we go. Yay. Cheers. It just tastes like melted ice cream. You know what it really tastes like to me? What? A second glass. <laughs> Are you happy, Dad? Yes, I'm very happy. The other thing about it is you can make it up and it will keep in your refrigerator up to like six months. So oh, yeah. you, you, you don't have to worry about it going bad. Regular eggnog, you know, it, it starts going downhill from the time you open it. You've got a week maybe to drink it, but that's about it, maybe five days. But with this, it just keeps getting better. You can just True. add some more stuff to it. If it, yeah. if you want, add a little more, you know, rum, add a little more spice, whatever you want, just add to it. It's all yours, make it your own. Well, and while I, I do think that the best way to have Coquito is with Puerto Rican rum, uh, Dad, I know you're a bourbon fan and you like your eggnog with bourbon, I think you could make this recipe with a dark aged spirit. It would work really well. You could do this recipe with bourbon 
Well, uh, I think we found a winner in the Smurl household for this Christmas. This should give eggnog a run for its money. It's, it's easier to make, it's more shelf stable, it's more flavorful. I think it is the superior option. It's more coconutty. So definitely, if you're looking for something to make for the holiday season and you're hopefully contained, uh, socially distanced, respectful gathering, um, and who the hell wants to serve people raw egg yolks, make some coquito. Two thumbs up from Tommy. And from Taylor. <laughs> All right. Uh, we didn't, the good thing is we didn't have to name any drinks this week because uh, they were already pre-existing drinks. That's good, right? Good, because I, I don't have a very good track record for that. I mean, me neither. So, hey, if you want to uh, tweet at us or follow us on Instagram, we are Neat Boozecast. Uh, if you would like to email us, we are neatboozecast at gmail.com. You can also support us on Patreon. Uh, where your suggestions will be guaranteed at some point to be made into episodes. Um, also, you get coasters and stickers and uh, special videos made just for you if you join our Patreon. So check us out there. We also have our neat Facebook group page up now if you're interested in joining that and we will have some of our stuff there or you can share communications with each other with other neat followers. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us. I've been Taylor Smurl. I've been Tommy Smurl. And this has been... Me! Me. My moose head is empty. I've got to get some more. <laughs>